stage for when the North Korean leader meets, well, his American counterpart, Donald Trump. Let's get the read right now from former CIA intelligence officer Peter Brooks and Fox News foreign policy analyst Kyron Skinner. Kyron, uh, what are your views of how the meeting went between the two Korea leaders and, and what we could glean from that? It certainly seemed like they were getting along just fine. Well, it was spectacular and historic. Um, I can't think of enough adjectives um, to describe what has happened. Um, but it was, above all, it was substantive and comprehensive. Um, they talked not only about denuclearizing the um, Korean Peninsula, which we were all waiting to hear about, but also broader disarmament, about finally ending the, the, the war between um, the two sides, and also about national reconciliation, something I've heard no one talk about this morning, um, the, the bringing the, the families together, trying to heal the nation. Um, we have, haven't seen this. In addition to the fact that it's the first time that a North Korean leader um, set foot on South Korean um, soil, so in every direction, if even um, it is historic, but even if half of what they talked about in their dec joint declaration occurs, the world has changed for the better. You know, uh, Peter, there's so much we don't know about what was going on behind the scenes. We do know that yeah. their goals were stated in, in mutual statements that came out shortly thereafter, where they said. An end of war and complete denuclearization. Now, um, that puts the onus on the South Koreans as well, working with the United States to do the same. How will that be received? Well, the devil's in the details, Neil. Uh, right now, I, I assume the White House has been briefed uh, by the Blue House in, in Seoul uh, about these meetings, and they know more than we do, and we'll probably know more in the, in the coming days. But for us on the outside, it's pretty light in details. Uh, it's taking all these promises on paper and putting them to action on the ground. That's the real challenge, and there's a lot of heavy lifting to be done there. Uh, these two countries have been separated by an armistice for 65 years. Uh, they haven't put, laid out their negotiating positions in terms of this. It's an aspiration, and I support that. And, of course, the denuclearization issue is, what does North Korea really mean by that? Uh, there are a lot of us who have been working on North Korea for many, many years, uh, have uh, been through the failed uh, agreements in the past. Uh, that are concerned about North Korea isn't really willing to completely denuclearize, that they have a different definition of denuclearization than we do. So we're going to need to know a lot more, and there's, there's a, a lot of work to be done. Although, so color me cautiously optimistic, but deeply skeptical of, of North Korea's intentions. All right, we're already seeing progress, Alexa, which we've not seen in decades, at least so far. To, to, to your point, uh, Kyron, the, 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 the concern seems to be what would make President Trump uh, you know, get away from the table, stand up and walk away if they, when he talks about not making much progress or what, what, what do you think that would be? Um, for, uh, first of all, let me also add that the United States is mentioned in the joint statement as being um, a central player in any negotiations going forward um, between the North and the South. And China was mentioned only after that as a potential fourth party. Um, and I think that means that President Trump will stick to his word because he has been very credible. And for him, it means um, denuclearization in the way that we understand it, no nuclear weapons. And I don't believe that the U.S. president and the strong national security team he's recently assembled uh, with Mr. Pompeo and, and, and Mr. Bolton, in addition to Secretary Mattis, um, will allow um, any other definition of denuclearization than what it actually means um, to the broader world. But also, we will help facilitate the peace process. And this is, in a way, fulfilling the America First doctrine in the sense that President Trump has called for self-determination, for regional solutions to regional problems. In fact, he's helped at the global level facilitate um, a discussion between North and South Korea. And that's what he wanted all along. Peter, very quickly, though, you got to make sure whatever agreement you come to that you can verify with the North Koreans. Right. We know from prior United Nations inspection teams in places like, you know, Iraq and elsewhere in Libya, and, uh, that, that, that can be broken. Yeah, I'm sure that the, uh, the White House team will insist upon that, that we have intrusive inspections, no notice inspections, but this could be a challenge with, with North Korea. You know, this, we've, we have made progress. Like I said, there's reason to be cautiously optimistic, but there's a lot of work to, yet to do. And our history with North Korea shows that there are significant challenges. So let's test their diplomatic intentions at talks and see where it goes. All right, guys, I want to thank you both.
very, very much. Uh, again, also a good start on this. Uh, when it comes to that meeting with the uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel and President Trump,